Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Monday, February 24th, 2020. I hope your week has started out on the good side as I look out my office window here in southeast North Carolina. In Wilmington, it is raining. It is kind of chilly out there, upper 50s. Well, that's chilly. I got the hoodie on. It's just not a very warm spring-like day, which makes sense, I guess, because it's still winter. But after the very warm spring-like weather that we have had, more of that than winter weather, even though we had a little bit of snow the other night, about 10,236 snowflakes, pretty much that's all it was here in Wilmington. Um, you know, that spring weather that we've had, you know, the little precursor to what's coming, kind of makes you spoiled. So anyhow, good to be back and doing the update here. A little bit of uh, things to chat with you about in the off season. Uh, as we continue on, we're you know less than 100 days from the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. And as you know, we discuss different puzzle pieces that we look at, uh, mostly just to pass the time. You know, this is interesting to look at, but, you know, how much of a bearing does it really have on what happens in August and September? Honestly, not much, but they are puzzle pieces nonetheless that we can look at and at least get some idea of keys to the game, as I call it. What do we look for going forward? In other words, you know, looking at this anomaly chart today, February 24th, isn't going to tell us a whole lot about what's going to happen in August and September but it gives us something to look out for down the road. Does that make sense? Hopefully so. All right, so speaking of the map, here's what we have. In the tropical Pacific here, the equatorial Pacific, kind of a large area of cooling anomalies, kind of warm off the coast of South America, out towards the Galapagos Islands, and then it warms up again over here in the central Pacific, and by and large, uh, it's just neutral conditions, maybe warm neutral Again, the North Pacific here, colder than the long-term average, not much of this Pacific meridional uh, mode, positive phase of it. This, this is all just fancy ways of saying the Pacific seems to be colder this year than it was for the last couple of years. That's the bottom line here, where conversely, all of the North Atlantic here, north of the equator, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, you name it, the North Atlantic Basin, for the most part, is running above the long-term average, you know, especially off the coast of Africa here. Uh, the subtropical Atlantic, very warm compared to average. Just a few speckles of colder anomalies showing up, which makes sense because we've had this huge ejection of dust that came off of Africa, spilled out over the Atlantic here, some strong trade winds and just otherwise winds not necessarily trades, trades are further south usually, but just a strong uh, low-level jet that pushed all this African dust out. Parts of the Canary Islands had to close down to air traffic, um, maybe all the Canary Islands, in fact. And uh, you know, so that's kind of cooled off temperatures out there a little bit. But boy, right there, right off the coast of Africa, extending off in west and southwest for several hundred miles, this plume right here, that's really, really warm compared to the long-term average. And this, again, is something to watch for the future. If this was August 24th right there, let's, let's say that that 2 was really an 8. Okay, we'll just change it. <laughs> if that was an 8, uh, this would be quite the, the ominous look, if you will, for the North Atlantic, meaning that it would be very warm compared to, well, not very warm. Got to be careful. It would be warmer than average and enough so that it, that it would raise some eyebrows. So that's what we will do. We'll watch and see, does this pattern hold? Uh, does it change much? Do we get warmer in the Atlantic? We'll put a positive sign here for warm. And does it get cooler in the Eastern Pacific? These are things that we'll watch for over the coming weeks and months ahead. Related to all of this is the most recent International Research Institute Climate Prediction Centers, uh, ENSO update, ENSO, E-N-S-O means El Nino Southern Oscillation, and El Nino is something that we watch for very closely because we know that a solid El Nino, the abnormal warming of the equatorial Pacific, we know that that phenomenon generally knocks down the Atlantic hurricane season for various reasons. We won't go into those today, but 
That's something that we know as generally fact. And so when we look at something like this, we can say, okay, how is the state of the uh, ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Phenomenon, how's it going? And this gives us a good idea of that. And uh, this comes out, this is from Columbia University, their CPC IRI update here. This was issued on the 19th of February. And right now, uh, we're currently in this neutral phase. That's the gray. And that is favored heavily over the next few months. And then as we get into the hurricane season, this is the time period that we really want to watch the closest. And as you can see, it has now moved up a couple of slots. You know, when we started this update out in January for the 2020 season, you know, the, the year ahead, uh, in early January, this time frame, August, September, October, the peak months of the hurricane season, was over here. Well, we've leapfrogged over a couple of spots. In other words, we're getting closer to that period in time. Duh. I mean, every, every moment that goes by, we're getting closer, right? But, uh, and so we look at this, and this again is the important time frame. And so far, uh, neutral conditions are favored. Uh, La Nina comes in second, and El Nino comes in third. Okay? So, uh, there you go. There's really not much chance of an El Nino forming and that is what I am most interested in. Will there be an El Nino in the tropical Pacific this year? And right now the data, uh, the forecast data as well as the observational data, when we just look out the window, so to speak, and see what's going on out there, that's this map right here. There's no El Nino out there. You know, you know maybe a little bit warmer than average over there as we talked about, but it certainly is not on the upswing that this major El Nino is coming. In fact, it looks to me like there will be no El Nino coming. And the data, the forecast in information here seems to suggest that. And you know, if you even look ahead to July, August, September time frame, uh, it's even more compelling you know, that there's less of a chance of El Nino and neutral seems to be favored. And over history, neutral conditions seem to slightly outweigh La Nina for getting the United States hit by hurricanes. And we'll look at this in more detail once we get to May and June when we take a real close look at the upcoming hurricane season. But it's those neutral years. La Nina gets a lot of attention, and I understand why, because it's the opposite of El Nino. And if you think that El Nino cancels hurricanes generally, La Nina must really promote them. Well, that can sometimes be the case, but when you go back and look through history at the years that were neutral, those are the years that the United States had the most hurricane landfalls and I think the most major hurricane landfalls. And I'm going to produce some charts and graphs with help from my good friend Brent down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He's good at that kind of stuff. And I'm going to prove it to you. We'll show you. All right, that's coming. All right, globally, things are quiet for the most part except... In the land down under, Q Minute Work. That's a great song, by the way. Uh, remember that from the 80s? I'm not even going to try to sing it, but you know the tune. Come from a land down under by Minute Work. So down under, uh, the tropical cyclones are working. We got Ferdinand, Ferdinand, I think I can say it, and Esther, and uh, a couple of tropical cyclones down in the uh, southern hemisphere. Uh, remember that the winds blow clockwise around cyclones in the southern hemisphere. And if we look at these from the European model perspective, uh, here's the outline of Australia, as best I can do here just to get you acquainted with what's what. Everything's kind of flipped. It's a little different, so bear with me. North is still at the top. So here's northern Australia, here's southern Australia, um, and so forth and so on. Here's east Australia, and there's the western portions of Australia. This is Ferdinand. And uh, this is Esther. And this is actually 24 hours in the past because I wanted to show you how this evolved. So you see that right there? We're minus 24 hours off the Tropical Tidbit site here. And as I go through, these are every 24-hour increments. Esther has made landfall in Australia already. We know that. And it's going to move across as Ferdinand kind of gets out of the way over there. Esther moves across northern Australia, stays remarkably intact and seems to strengthen. What the heck? I mean, what's going on with that? And then it moves. Uh, this is about six days out. 
and it gets back out over the water over the northwest coast of Australia and intensifies. And it kind of hangs out, and then it looks like it tries to come back. So maybe I need to jump on the next Qantas flight and go to Australia, as if it would be that easy. <laughs> Can we teleport? Can somebody do that? Can I just email myself and as an as an attachment to Darwin or somewhere? That that would be nice. Um, but seriously, this would be really interesting to watch uh, as we go back and look at that. You know, it kind of hangs out there after that landfall, and then somehow the euro shows it staying intact, and it makes a run for the water again, goes offshore, and then comes back over the next ten days. So you folks down in Australia, definitely keep an eye on this. It would certainly mean Quite a lot of, well, that's not useful when you use the same color as the background. Quite a lot of rainfall, perhaps, for this area. And maybe Esther comes back and makes landfall again. Uh, something we'll keep an eye on over the next few days. I know you guys down in Australia will be watching this. So, wow. So go figure. All right. There we go. In the Western Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere, uh, I wanted to show you this. We've got some mid-latitude storms churning away. Uh, strong upper level low pressure area sitting over the eastern Atlantic over here. Um, and then we got this mid latitude storm system in the front that came through. I'm going to show you some results of that in a minute from Puerto Rico. Another mid latitude storm over the nation's midsection. And as I've pointed out, I like to talk about this a lot in the off season. The energy is up here in the mid latitudes. Not much energy down in the tropics. That comes later when the seasons begin to shift. And we're still 80, 90, 100 days, probably less than that, probably about 80 to 90 days away from really seeing that happen. We start to see more energy come together down in the tropics and less organization and energy up here in the subtropics and the northern latitudes. I just think it's fascinating. You shift it, you change it, and we start to focus more on the tropics. Now, down here, you can see this front that draped across the Northeast Caribbean and one of our good friends and one of our patrons in San Juan, his name is Carlos, sent me this picture. Uh, he says, this is the route we took. We were on this route. On the way over to get dinner, him, myself, and Brent, uh, back in August, late August there, when we were down there, Brent and I met up with Carlos as we were getting ready for Dorian, which, of course, went around Puerto Rico. To the east, we thought it was going to go across Puerto Rico and maybe exit to the west, but story for another day there. Uh, this is a, a picture that Carlos sent from today, and quite a bit of heavy rain there. And he says, you know, hey, you remember this? We took this route. We had dinner at Cheesecake Factory in San Juan and uh, back in August, getting ready for Dorian that yeah, more or less never really meant to be for Puerto Rico, which is good. But it just goes to show you, I mean, look back at the satellite picture. It's not like there's a tremendous amount of convection down here, but it's been raining down there. And uh, this is the result. So thank you, Carlos, for sending th that my way. Uh, real quick, let's look at the radar in San Juan, uh, if I can. Where are you? Se Puerto Rico sector. There we go. So, you know, a few showers around. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for blocking it. What the heck? Come on. Go back. <laughs> it's not going to let me. Oh, i got to click it. There we go. I was worried. There's a few showers there. I'm trying to animate it, but it's being a real pain in the butt. It's not animating for me. Oh, well. Wah, wah for Mark. It rained in Puerto Rico, probably still raining a little bit, and that's the bottom line. I don't know why it's not loading for me. Very annoying. Uh... It's not, I'm just going to keep trying just for a second. You know what? Forget it. Goodbye. We'll get a way around that. I know people will post on the YouTube comments. What did I do wrong? How did I screw that up? And how do I fix it for the future? All right, looking ahead at lower 48 weather. Uh, and by the way, Carlos, thanks for sending me that photograph. Sorry, I botched the radar animation. I should have just pulled one off of my website, our Hurricane Track Insider site. We have these GIF animations of radar. I should have just pulled that up. Uh, I'll remember for next time, you betcha. All right, so lower 48 weather, uh, storm system in the nation's midsection today. Uh, otherwise, fairly innocuous, a little bit of storminess, winter storm weather in the Rockies, and a little storm system up in Canada. 
but no major big time blockbuster news making bomb cyclones blizzards anything like that uh not not right now uh some cold air tries to come back a kind of a major storm there coming up towards the end of the week for portions of the great lakes uh the eastern lakes anyway maybe some heavy lake effect snows for you folks in the usual areas of new york and uh, pennsylvania and then you can watch these uh, these height lines in here. These are your thicknesses in the atmosphere. Strong northwest flow. And that's what I'm trying to show here. Let me just draw it in yellow. Uh, around this upper level and surface low, etc. Basically low pressure in the atmosphere. You're going to get some snows here along the spine of the Appalachians. For what it's worth, that northwest flow. Uh, so from the Smokies all the way up through the mountains of Virginia, West Virginia, into Pennsylvania, and then this will be lake effect snow through here. This will be good because, man, the ski season, especially in the southern Appalachians, has stunk this year because of the abnormally warm weather. But rejoice in the fact that uh, towards the end of the week, uh, that northwest flow and colder air will bring a little bit of natural snow, and, and there's a little another impulse coming right there. And the colder temperatures will mean that you get to make your own snow. Uh, as much of a pain in the butt and as an expense that is, at least you'll be able to do so. So going out a, a week into time, not much in the way of major storm systems. As you can see here, maybe some more wet weather uh, out west as we approach next week at this time. Uh, which is good. You need the snowpack. You need the water, etc. Um, but we don't have any big time blockbuster storms in the cards over the next five to seven days. So after the snows that we had in the Carolinas, eastern Tennessee, uh, and south, uh, southeast Virginia, things are kind of calming down. So there you go. All right, that is about it for me. I do want to remind you I'm on Twitter. You see that right over there as I point to it. Uh, Twitter is uh, at Hurricane Track. I'm also on Patreon. We are crowdfunded for the most part. That's how most of the funding that operate that lets me operate what we do here is accumulated that is through crowdfunding we are in the age of crowdfunding people supporting what matters to them they support podcasts they support animation short films series web series you name it uh, people know about this it's it's a growing movement and we are part of that on patreon that's right down here patreon.com slash hurricane track you can also click the link in the description and we have a podcast series, speaking of podcasts, on Patreon exclusively for our Patreon folks and our Hurricane Track Insider subscribers. It's called Stories from the Hurricane Highway. It's an exclusive podcast, and uh, it's every week. And we are up to the year 2003. That will drop this week. It's basically a look back at my career from the very beginnings, episode one or mile one, whichever, if we're going to go the stories of the Hurricane Highway metaphor, then mile one, uh, how I got into this. That was the very first episode that I put down uh, way, 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 way back in December. So that's on Patreon as well. Uh, so just wanted to point that kind of stuff out. Um, coming up later in uh, down the road in March, I'm going to be appearing at Stormfest in Charlotte. I'll talk about that more later. And then in early April, I will be down at the uh, National Tropical Weather Conference in South Padre Island. That's around April 1st or so, somewhere around there for a few days. And then 8th, 9th, 7th, 8th, 9th of April, something like that, I will be in Orlando. So we've got a few things coming up where we're going to do some meet and greets and some opportunities to meet some folks. That's what you do in a meet and greet, right? And we will discuss these in more detail. I'm just kind of dangling. I need a little augmented reality of dangling right i'm kind of dangling and teasing these things for you today so just something to look forward to uh if you want to yeah you know, for the future it's up to you i'll be at these events put it that way and maybe i get to meet you all right i am done that is it from me for this week as always i appreciate you tuning in from whatever device you may be doing so from i am mark sutter hurricane track.com i'll talk to you again early next week